Hello all, welcome to the MOOC course on managing human resources and organization. This is a continuation of our previous session and if you could recall, we spoke about the objectives of human resource management, the importance of human resource management and the first step in human resource management which is human resource planning. How do we plan for the people, for recruiting people in an organization? We saw job analysis, analyzing a job which is actually job specification and job description. We moved on to have a look at a recruitment. We saw the internal sources and the external sources. And here we are to look into the selection. Recruitment is the process of attracting potential candidates for a job. But whereas selection is the process of choosing the person who has applied for the job. Was, at, was attracted for applying for the job. T uh, to take you through the theory, selection is the process of choosing qualified individuals who are available to fill positions in an organization. It involves the best applicant to fill a position. So the process of choosing the various applicants who have submitted their applications is called selection. It can be told as choosing the fit candidate or the right candidate or rejecting the unfit candidate or a combination of both. Choosing the right candidate, rejecting the unfit candidate. Selection involves both because it picks up the fit and rejects the unfit. According to Dale Yoder, the human resource specialist whom we saw earlier in our previous uh, course itself, he says selection is the process in which candidates for employment are divided into two classes. Those who are to be offered employment and those who are not supposed to be offered employment. Selecting the fit and rejecting the unfit. There are different ways by which we choose the best applicant for the job and they are aptitude tests. What is the aptitude of the candidate who is applying for doing this job? aptitude test. It can be intelligence test to check your IQ level, how good you are, IQ, intellectually, your intelligent quotient, mechanical aptitude test, if in case the work involves some type of mechanics, then the mechanical aptitude tests to check the way in which you are doing jobs, your psychomotor skills a test, psycho means the mental and the motor means the hand. How is the coordination between your mind or your thought and your hand? How are you able to do the work? Clerical aptitude test. If a person is supposed to join for a, a secretary job, does he have shorthand skills? Does he have typewriting skills? Does he know uh, Microsoft, basics of Microsoft? So the clerical aptitude tests. The second type is achievement test, the job knowledge test, the knowledge for doing that particular job. Let's take for example, if in case a trainer is supposed to be taken, does he have the right knowledge, expertise, skills to be a trainer, is achievements there, work sample test, give him some uh, work and ask him to do it, work sample test, situational tests giving group discussions. What are group discussions? A group of people, maximum uh, 10, minimum 8 people sitting together and discussing a particular topic given by the interviewer so that the interviewer will understand the communication skills of the candidate who is sitting there, uh, the ability to work with people in the group, whether he is a very conflicting person, uh, is he able to work with people, manage with people, is he shouting? Is he getting angry? Is he getting stressed with people when they give their own points? Group discussions, in basket exercise, you give a situation and ask them to make themselves uh, feel in that situation, in basket exercise, you are in that situation, how do you do it? In basket exercise, more like case studies or role, role plays, assessment centers, assessment centers will have a holistic a lot of tests together, assessment centers in which they might have the intelligence test, they might include a, a work sample test, 
they might have an in basket, they might have a group discussion. It is a center assessment. Holistically, the candidate is being assessed. Interest says, what are your interests? Let's say, for example, somebody is applying for a job uh, in Mahendra and Mahendra, uh, test driving vehicles. Does he really have the desire to do uh, go on experiential rides? Does he like, is he an adventurous person? Is being adventurous his interest? So definitely he will want to be a test drive driver. The interest test, the personality tests, which are done through objective tests, the projective test. So these are few of the ways by which employees get selected in organization. So we finish recruitment. Recruitment is you attract, stimulate best candidates to apply for the job. Select, you are selecting people to join the job based on the caliber, their skill sets, knowledge, etc. And the third stage, so they, have, they, they, were, they recruited selected and then now being selected you are placed on the job and there is an induction process as well as an orientation process what is a placement now once you join the organization it is a process of assigning a specific job to each of the selected candidates like for example let's take for example there is a campus recruitment you get selected and then based on your interest based on your expertise they will send you you are a human resource management person okay let's say for example you are a human resource management student you are getting selected in a campus recruitment you undergo your uh, uh, selection process and then they find out whether you're good for doing a recruitment or you're good for doing performance appraisal or you're good for doing compensation management or you're good in labor law to take care of the compliances so what is the specific job which they are going to assign to you to each of the selected candidates it involves assigning a specific rank and responsibility to an individual that is placement now that you are placed now that you are assigned okay this is going to be your job the next will be your induction according to flippo induction is concerned with introducing a new employee to the organization he is being introduced to the organization he is being introduced to the policies of the organization he is being introduced to the practices of the organization this is the time you'll have to report to work. If in case you're taking leave, this is the procedure for applying for leave. So these things are being told to him, inducting. The next is orientation. Orientation is the process of familiarizing new employees with the physical layout of the com company. They will take them around the company and tell them, this is the place you'll have to come in. Whenever you come, you'll have to swipe your card here or do your biometrics here at this point. They'll take you to the canteen. This is the canteen in this area. This is the place demarked for managers, staff, etc. And this is the place where the employees sit. And you definitely need to wash the plates and keep after you eat the food, etc. etc. So the physical layout, various departments. This is where the HR department is. You have any clarification of PF, PF and E say, go to this person, the table is here or the office is here. Uh, the infirmary or the hospital is here. So all these are being told uh, in the orientation process. Let's do a quick check here so that we'll see how much you've grasped. The resources of men, money, material and machinery are collected, coordinated and utilized through people. Okay, so when we were looking at job analysis, we were looking at job analysis consists of job description and yes, job specification. JD plus JS. JA is equal to JD plus JS. Two sources of recruitment are, there are two sources by which we recruit people. Yes, internal source, existing employees and references from existing employees. Then we have external source, advertisement, campus recruitment, consultancy, online portals. Good. Next, selection involves picking the dash candidate and rejecting the dash candidate. Yes, picking the fit candidate and rejecting the unfit candidate. Fifth, dash is the process of assigning a specific job to each of the selected candidates. Yes, placement. Placement is the process of assigning a specific job to each of the selected candidates. Dash is concerned with introducing a new employee to the organization. Induction. Yes, 
if in case it was orientation it would be to the physical layout and the availability of resources in the infrastructure of the organization let's continue and move on to the next part of human resource management employees training now em training is a process that tries to improve skills or add to the existing level of knowledge so that the employee is better equipped to do his present job or to mold him to fit for a higher job involving higher responsibilities it bridges the gap between what the employee has and what the job demands so in between is the training program so if in case we give the training program the employee is now ready to uh, do this job and the demands of this particular job okay uh, so it improves the skills and adds to the existing level of knowledge of the employees so uh, he doesn't have knowledge of a particular language a software language then you teach so that he is able to take up the new project which is coming up which needs knowledge of the uh, particular language the objective of training and development uh, is to make sure the availability of skilled and willing workforce to an organization they are all skilled employees skilled and willing highly motivated you have trained me in this and i want to do this skilled and motivated employees training process molds the thinking of employees and leads to quality performance of employees a person who is not trained will not be able to do the job perfectly you give him the right training he will be able to do the job perfectly so it molds the thinking of employees and leads to quality performance of employees it is continuous and never ending in nature it is continuous you can't stop ah this year i have completed training next year there is no training for you no there might be a new project which comes you might have to teach the employees there might be a new technology which comes you might have to teach the employees so it is a continuous process what is the need new candidates who join an organization are given training this training familiarizes them with the organizational mission vision rules and regulations and the working conditions if you could recall we are talking about the induction process the next type of training the existing employees are trained to refresh and enhance their knowledge they refresh they refresh so even as teachers we have something called the refresher course so when i say the refresher course we go back and we study what we have studied again so that we are refreshed whatever new concepts have come in into the subject we get to know about it so refresh and enhance increase their knowledge also new subjects come in we increase our knowledge if any updations and amendment take place in technology training is given to cope up with those changes uh, all this while in human resource management there was only this excel sheet in which we were uh, uh, doing all calculations uh, and all telling how many people joined the organization how many people left the organization what is the trend we used to have a h look up or v look up etc etc but nowadays we have something called the power bi which gives a lot of uh, generates a lot of figures and charts for us to clearly understand so you need to train the people so as to they are able to work with the power bi software when uh, the fourth one when promotion or career growth becomes important training is given to employees are prepared to share the responsibilities of higher level job so when you need to give promotion so we already said having internal sourcing is very good so you, you somebody is there and you want to give him a promotion he is lacking in one particular skill alone give him a training in that particular skill and promote him he is also going to feel happy and we are not going to go waste our time hunting for a new person to fill that particular vacancy how do you do the training need analysis the objective in establishing a training need analysis is to find out the answers to the following question why is training needed what type of training is needed when is the training needed where is the training needed who needs the training who will conduct the training and how will the training be performed why is training needed people need to understand power bi why what type of training give them a hands on experience don't just talk theory or draw on the board and show but give them laptops give them the software tell them this is power bi work on it give examples so what type of training is hands on experience when is the training needed from january 2024 onwards we are going to start of using power bi in all hr functions 
So before January 2024, please complete the Power BI training. Where is the training needed? We will do it only within our company for all the employees. Or let's take for example, Chennai head office is there. We will get people from all the other locations to come to Chen, Chennai and in the head office we will do the training. Who needs the training? All HR people who work with data, we need to have them trained in uh, Power BI. Who will conduct? There is one person in the organization who is already certified Power BI uh, in Power BI. We will ask him to train or we will get a certified trainer from outside to train the employees who are coming. How will the training be performed? It is again going on to from the morning till the evening. Uh, do we give a break? How many days it is going to be? And so on and so forth. What are the various types of training program? Number one, orientation. We told orientation, taking them around and telling them these are the things, physically telling them what it is and all that, giving them an idea of the policies, programs of the organization. Onboarding, onboarding is more than equal to induction. Technical skills development, any particular technical skills alone which needs to be developed, technical skill development like Power BI. Soft skill development, we find that many of the employees, many a times there is always a conflict within them. So we need to tell them how do we manage conflicts. So conflict management, soft skill development, products and services training. Let's take for example an employee is in the uh, sales department and in the sales department they are coming up with a new product. So how do you sell this product? Teaching the method, teach him the method. So uh, product uh, services training, quality training, how do you check the quality of a product, quality training, safety training, you tell them the do's and don'ts of handling a particular machinery, safety training and team training as well. When I say team training, all of together when we work together definitely there will be conflicts etc. How do we work as a team? Yes, we are moving on to the next important concept of human resource management, performance appraisal. So you have recruited a, uh, uh, you have recruited and selected a fit candidate, you have given training and now you are going to find out how is he performing on the job, how is he doing, what is happening, is he productive, is he doing well, what should I do to improve his productivity. Performance appraisal is a systematic, there is a process, systematic, systematic, periodic. Once in a year, twice a year, every quarter, once in three months, periodic and so far as humanly possible, an impartial rating. Impartial, there should not be any bias. Who oh, is my sister's son's relative uh, or sister's son's friend? That bias should not be there. It should be impartial as possible of an employee's excellence in matters pertaining to his present job and to his potentials for a better job. Why the potentials for a better job? If in case there is an internal uh, sourcing, okay, I choose this person, promote him or transfer him to another department. Okay, moving on to the next definition by Scott Clother and Spregel. So they say performance appraisal is a record of progress for apprentice and regular employees as a guide in making promotions, transfers or demotions, as a guide in making lists for bonus distribution for giving money, bonus distribution for seniority consideration. So he has done well and so we will give him a seniority, we will give him a upliftment, we will give him a promotion, seniority uh, consideration and for rates of pay, do we need to increase his pay, rates of pay as an instrument for discovering hidden genius and as a source of information that makes conferences with employees helpful. So somebody who is very good in something, who has a potential for something, so you identify through performance appraisal. What is he good at? Where can I use him somewhere in another department? What are the purposes of performance appraisal? It helps the management to take decisions about the salary increase of an employee. He is doing very well, so give him a salary hike. Give him a salary hike so that he will perform even more better. The continuous evaluation of employee helps in improving the quality of an employee in job performance. So he is being monitored continuously, he is being monitored continuously. Yes, in this quarter these are the things I have done. Next quarter I should do something more, I should do this. So 
it gives a direction for the employee. It brings out the facilities available to an employee when the management is prepared to provide adequate facilities for every effective performance. It minimizes the communication bat, gap, uh, sorry, gap between the employer and employee. Why do I say the communication gap? There is a performance appraisal and in the performance appraisal, the reviewer or the manager will talk to the employee and say, see, these are the areas in which you are lacking. You need to improve your skills so that you do well. So the reviewer communicates to the employee that you are lacking these particular skills, you need to improve or you are excellent in these skills. So he motivates them. So there is a, it reduces the communication gap between the employer and employee. Promotion gives an, uh, 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 promotion is given to an employee on the basis of performance appraisal. So you are doing very well. So there is a performance appraisal. The training needs of an employee can be identified through performance appraisal. So this employee is lacking some skills. You give training for these employees to, to bring him up. Okay. The training needs of an, uh, the decision for discharging for an employee can also be made through performance appraisal. So this person is not performing, please send him away. Give him a pink slip. Pink slip is sending an employee off. Performance appraisal is used to transfer a person again. So identifying skills, lacuna and no, he is not fit for this job, we will give him another role, we will give him another job. The grievances of an employee are eliminated through performance appraisal as well. So it's a time to communicate and say, sir, I'm not really happy with this work, the assignments which are given to me. So it also uh, gives way for communicating grievances of an employee to the employer. There are certain guidelines which we need to follow while doing a performance appraisal. Number one, performance appraisal should be in writing and carried down at least once a year. At least once a year, performance appraisal needs to be done. The performance appraisal information should be shared with the employee. It should be told to him. See, this is where you stand. You need to improve in these areas. Employee should have the opportunity to respond in writing to the appraisal. If the appraisal is lacking or if the appraisal says a lot of leave has been taken by the employee, the employee has the every right and opportunity to should be given an opportunity to write to the employer, to the reviewer, to the manager saying, sir, my child was hospitalized or my wife was going through this. I had to take leave to be along with them. So the, there is an opportunity given, there should be an opportunity given to the employee to express what went wrong or if in case it is identified he is done very well, sir, kindly give me a promotion. Employee should have a mechanism to appeal the results of the performance appraisal. Manager should have adequate opportunity to observe the employees. Let's take for example, if in case the appraisal is being a little impartial, not impartial, but partial, uh, partial. And so what happens is you should uh, give him an opportunity to appeal to his manager, the next manager, so as to uh, you is able to improve. Performance appraisal should focus on employee behavior and results rather than personal traits or characteristics. Rather than saying you are you're personally like this, don't pinpoint the personality but give him a result oriented uh, feedback. Performance appraisal for process, first you will have to establish performance standards. Tell him these are the things which you need to do. So if in case the job description is given, he will be able to understand these are the things which I will have to do. Communicate the standards, tell him. So within this day, you will have to sell so many pieces, so many pieces of uh, uh, the pen or the cooker or whatever be it or watches, setting targets, sales targets, measuring the actual performance. So uh, his target was to sell 10 watches that day at the showroom, but he has sold only 6 watches that day. So measuring the actual performance and the gap, comparing the actual with the desired performance. 10 had to be sold, but he sold only 6. Discussing results. So what do you do? Why is there a lacuna? What do you do? You need to convince the uh, customers who come to the showroom and decision making whether you need to give him more training or he's not fit for sales, you give him some other billing job. So this is also done through performance appraisal. Now we are moving on to the next important function of compensation. A person works for getting paid. Compensation, salary. It is a very, very integral part of management and it is a systematic approach to provide monetary value, to give salary, to give money. When I say monetary, I am talking about salary, about money, 
value to employees. It aims to establish and maintain an equitable, fair and equitable. Just because I like person A, I cannot pay him 100 rupees more. And just because I don't like uh, person B, I cannot pay 100 rupees less. Fair and equitable wage and salary structure should be there. It refers to the establishment and implementation of sound policies and practices to employee compensation. It should be good, sound, good practices and policies. When I say po policies, regulations, guidelines. So many years of experience, somebody is coming, fix him at this pay scale. He is having only uh, this much of experience, give him this pay scale. It is essentially the application of a systematic approach to the problem of ensuring that employees are paid on a logical, equitable and fair manner. Logical, there is a reason behind why I am paying him that, that much. Equitable, equal work, equal pay. And fair, everybody is treated fair. There is a difference between wage, salary and compensation. Wage is paid to blue collars, uh, paid daily, weekly or monthly paid for the jobs which can to some extent be measured in terms of money's worth. Salary, it is paid to white collar workers. When I say blue collar workers, people who do uh, physical work, a lot of manual work. White collar workers are many a times decision makers, work people who work on desks, administrators, paid monthly to employees whose contribution cannot be easily measured. There what happens, blue collar workers, uh, 10 pieces of uh, mold you will have to make or cooker you will have to make. But here we cannot say 10 decisions you will have to make to white collar workers. Compensation includes all wages, all allowances. So the salary plus the bonus, but uh, plus the uh, plus uh, any other incentives, etc., etc. It is a wholesome package. The cost as such. Okay, what are the objectives? The objectives of compensation management or to pay is to reward employees according to effect and merit, based on the work they do and the merit, the quality with which they do. Attract and retain the services of desirable employees. I don't want this person to leave the organization. I somehow want to retain him. It's okay if I give him 100 rupees more also. To retain, attract and retain the services of desirable employees. To get improved employee morale and productivity. Uh, the morale, I'm paid well. I'm happy with my pay. And I'm able to produce. Because I'm happy, I'm able to produce a lot of more products. Pay employees according to the importance and difficulty of the job. In fact, if you notice, the top level managers will be being paid more because decision making is very tough. So difficulty of the job, incorporate legal requirements like we have the Payment of Wages Act, the Minimum Wages Act, Equal Remuneration Act, simplify collective bargaining. So you, the collective bargaining part, the trade union and the employees sit together and bargain. Explain to employees how and why they are paid the reason, the logical reasoning, they will be able to understand, yes, there is a reason why they are paying this much to so-and-so employee or this job. What are the factors which influence compensation level, the job need, what type of work, uh, labor does the job require, the ability to pay by the employer, if in case it is a cottage industry, uh, little only they will be able to pay, the ability to pay by the employer. The cost of living, in Chennai, the cost of living is going to be very high or in the metropolitan cities, it is going to be very high. But whereas in rural backgrounds, interior places, uh, the cost of living is going to be low. So there is no need for uh, a higher pace. Prevailing wage rates in that particular area, the strength of the trade unions, the productivity, you produce more, the profit is going to be more, so we are going to pay better. The government regulations, and demand and supply for labor. We do not have IT engineers at all. So I need to pay a lot of money to get good IT engineers. Moving on to promotion. Promotion, we already said, is the vertical movement of an employee within the organization. In other words, promotion refers to the upward movement of an employee from one job to higher job. Promotion has an inbuilt motivational value. If I am being promoted as from assistant professor to associate professor, it gives me a motivation. I am I am motivated to do better. I am feeling good about my new designation. Now, what are the types of uh, promotion? There is a horizontal promotion which I already told you. There is a vertical promotion which I already told you from department to department. There is also the dry promotion. 
there is a promotion without any extra perks or benefits. There isn't a higher pay or anything like that. Demotion, a demotion refers to the permanent re reassignment to a lower position. You are being pushed down. You are moving a step below. Lower level of responsibility or required skill and a lower pay grade as well. It is possible that the employee will not respond well to the demotion. is unhappy. You are moving me below. I am not feeling very happy about it. And it, many a times demotion is a result of employee misconduct. It can send the message to other employees that company is not very much uh, happy about uh, people who do a lot of misconduct or wrong things. We are moving to the last part called the employee separation. The process of separation of employees means the employee getting separated for, from the organization in any of the following ways which I am going to tell you all. He, the severance, the cutting, the removal, severance of the relationship of employer and employee. It can be due to superannuation, it can be due to retirement, it can be due to resignation, it can be due to dismissal, discharge, suspension, etc. What is superannuation? It means attainment of a particular age uh, fixed by the contractor for him to complete his job. Should be 50, 58 years as mentioned by the employer when he gives the appointment order itself. Retirement, termination of a service of an employee other than and superannuation. He retires from job. Many a times the latest concept which is coming in is the voluntary retirement or golden handshake scheme. A person is only 45 years old, 50 years old and uh, the company says because there is surplus of labor, many people are there, they want them to leave the organization. So 40 years plus, minimum 10 years of experience, those who want to leave the organization can leave the organization and we will give you a bulk amount which you can use. Reasons for VRS could be to reduce the burden of unproductive employees. There will be people who are very redundant, who are not contributing to the organizational de uh, development. So you want to remove those people, VRS is a very good uh, way. Downsizing, you have 200 employees, I want to reduce the numbers, 100 is enough, you give a VRS scheme and people leave. Change in technology, so these people, they, they are unable to pick up the technology, I want new people who have knowledge of technology, so you continue. Recession, there is a reduction in the uh, business as such and so I want to remove people, so removing. Mergers and acquisition, two or three companies come together and I do not want few people and I am removing the people. Resignation, employee himself leaves the organization. Dismissal, employee separation is a result of punishment for a misconduct, extreme action, it is an extreme action and is the end of employee-employer relationship. Suspension, it is prohibiting an employee to come attend work to perform his normal duties assigned to him. Employee is suspended only after proper inquiry is conducted and chance is given for him to explain things. We are done. So I, I have taken you through how you manage human resources in an organization. To quickly summarize or recap what we have done, managing human resource is very important to achieve the individual, group and the organizational goals. It helps in keeping the employees motivated and satisfied in their job. Good pay, I am happy. Performance appraisal is done well, I am happy. I am giving a, given a promotion, I am happy and things like that. Employee life cycle is taking care of the employee from the time a candidate applies for a vacancy to the time the employee separates or leaves the organization. HRM includes the R to R function, recruitment to retirement function. The functions of HRM are recruitment and selection which we saw, placement induction and orientation, employee training, performance appraisal compensation of employees and employee separation. I hope I have taken you through these functions and you are able to understand. To conclude and tell you how important managing human resources in organizations is. Managing human resources is so important to organizations that many call this department as the heart and soul of an organization or a business. Heart and soul. Managing human resources is actually managing the most important and valuable resource of an organization. If we fail in properly managing human resources, an organization would fail to achieve a high level of efficiency and workforce management. All the best. Thank you.